delighted to have digital artist and author Steve Kaplan here with me now. Steve, thank you so much for joining me. Glad to be back. Uh, you're going to be taking us on a bit of a 3D Photoshop tour, aren't you? That's right, yeah. Fantastic. Before that though, can you explain a little bit about how you work with Photoshop 3D? Uh, I've been doing photo montage illustrations for newspapers and magazines for a very long time. And the 3D features started to appear in Photoshop a few years ago and I thought well that's quite interesting I can't imagine how I'd use them and then one day I got a commission from the Sunday Telegraph uh, newspaper who wanted an image of a train going away and jumping off a railway track. Uh -huh. You can look online you can find plenty of pictures of trains coming towards you but none of them going away and I right. thought how on earth am I going to do this? Yeah. I found a 3D model online of a train, yeah. brought it into Photoshop, I could view it from any angle, mm -hmm. turn it around, place it where I wanted it, and I thought, this is the way to do it. Yeah. Rather than finding photographs of exactly what you need from exactly the right angle, yeah. you can get a 3D model of an object, position it, light it, render it, and there it is exactly Absolutely. as you want it. Fantastic. So Photoshop's really, really useful for working with and manipulating 3D models, but also there's some functionality in there for 3D printing now, right? That's absolutely right. And I got into 3D printing a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I was thrilled to find out that Photoshop now supports 3D printing directly. Yeah. And this means you're able to make objects and produce them in the real world. So here's a little mashup I did oh. of some legs made in the uh, poser figure modeling program yeah. the top made in photoshop yeah. and the whole thing printed out and i can print this directly from photoshop yes that's an extraordinary thing you can anything you can imagine yeah. you can now not only design you can actually print one and photoshop does all the kind of hard work for you in terms of building any scaffolding and structure and support exactly right? exactly there are some definite practical uses of this as well and I'm going to show you just two examples of the kind of things that you can do with 3D modeling and 3D printing in Photoshop. Great, let's take a look. So a friend of mine has a rather nice wooden chess set and um, he recently lost one of the pawns from his chess set mm. and, and he said well could I think of a way of making one of these because I can do it a wood turning or maybe I could make it on a lathe. And I thought well, that's going to be very difficult, yeah. maybe I could print it instead. Yeah. So here's what I did. I took his chess set and I drew a pen path around it. So just going, tracing around the photograph of one of his existing pawns. Rather than undercutting here, I made that into a slight curve mm -hmm. so that it would be easier to print. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I'm just drawing around the shape of this pawn until I get to here. And there is our pen path. Yeah. Let's hide our original photograph. We can now take that pen path and make a 3D extrusion from it. And here it comes. And as you can see, all it's done is stretch that out yeah. backwards. What I want to do is to set the extrusion to zero, and instead I want to rotate it. So we can revolve it 360 degrees. Yeah, around its axis. Around the centre, this is where it happens yeah. initially. You can change the axis to rotate it around the left, mm -hmm. and there is the pawn. So, you know, a couple of minutes, yeah. we've taken that photograph of the pawn, traced the outline, and then 
there is the ah, printed form. Fantastic. So the chessboard is back in action again. The chessboard is now back in action and it looks exactly like the poem that it replicates. That's fantastic. And also within Photoshop, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, there's a service, isn't there, that you can... That's um, right. There, there's a, a couple of bureaus that you can upload your models to. Yeah. They will print them for you in an astonishing range of materials yeah. from plastic to platinum. Yes. Uh, which gets kind of pricey. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it gives you the prices, doesn't it, as you're kind of selecting your options? It so. gives you the prices prepared to be horrified by some of the <laughs> yeah. higher end ones. But it means that anybody now can 3D print um, exactly. from Photoshop, which, exactly. is, which is great and very exciting for a lot of um, product designers and developers. Yes, certainly. As well as for certainly. those of us at home who want to make uh, plastic objects to hold mobile phones in and that kind of thing. Precisely. <laughs> great. Thank you very much, Steve. Let me give you another example of how easy it is to make a 3D object. So I'm going to take a model here, a photograph. So this is simply a photograph of a beetle. And it's a beetle photographed, and I've cut it out so there's taken the background away. It is no more than a photograph. Yeah. What I can do is take that layer and, say, make a 3D extrusion from it. And what this will do is stretch this beetle out so it just extrudes that downwards, as you can see. There we go. What I want to do is take the extrusion way down so it makes it very, very much thinner. Mm -hmm. And instead, I'm going to use this rather interesting technique called inflation. So I'm going to click on that again. And I can blow this beetle up as if I'm pumping it up full of air. And you're doing all of this from the on-screen widget, aren't you? That's a, that's I'm a real using change. the head-up display, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It means rather than going to the panels and setting all these things mm -hmm. with sliders, setting them numerically, mm -hmm. you look at the image itself, you click on it, you drag. It's a much it more right. tactile experience, isn't it? Because in Photoshop, if it looks right, it is right. Mm -hmm. We're not worried about the scaffolding going on behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. If it looks right, that's what you want to get. And there, in the seconds, is our 3D beetle made from a flat photograph, which we can then go ahead and print out. Lovely. You don't want to come across him on a dark night, though, do you? <laughs> you don't, but we know he's made of plastic. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Isn't that great? So just two examples of really how easy it is to make your 3D models. And yeah. if you have access to a 3D printer, or even go and buy a 3D printer, they're getting cheaper and cheaper all the time. They are. Steve, thank you so much for bringing your wonderful 3D objects along and showing us how easy it is to work with Photoshop 3D. Uh, we really want to hear your thoughts on what you've seen so far, so do get in touch with us via Twitter using the hashtag CreateNow. And if you've made anything in Photoshop using 3D, do send us a photo as well. We really want to hear from you, so take part in our Twitter competition by sending in a creative tweet to tell us about your top Creative Cloud features. Our Adobe panel of judges will select their favourite tweet from each Northern European country, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland and the UK. The winners will receive a 12-month membership to the Creative Cloud. But not only that, the overall tweet from all the regions will win a Microsoft Surface Pro 3. So get posting your tweets using the hashtag create now. The competition is open from midday on the 10th of November till midnight on the 13th of November. And you can see full details, terms and conditions at this URL. Good luck.